White, black, Hispanic. Michael would soon learn that in California's prisons, blacks are at a distinct disadvantage. In L.A. County jails and state prisons, Latino inmates outnumber blacks by about two to one, and inevitably the tensions erupt in violence. This is the result of the things that are going on in the street. You, know, you have gang warfare going on in the street. They get arrested, they come to jail, and the gang warfare carries over into the jail system. The Latino inmates have been asked and directed by the Mexican Mafia to attack a black randomly to show superiority, not only in the street, but in the jail. You have the Southern Hispanics, which are mainly from Fresno South. You have the Northern Hispanics from Fresno up. Um, you have the Blacks, they have the Crips, they have the Bloods, you have white um, Aryan Brotherhood type gangs, and the inmates fight for control of what they have in here. Brown. Michael says the Hispanics have the upper hand and not just because of their numbers. We're way more unorganized than they are, clearly. You know, they're the mafia and they got one head, one unit, whereas the blacks as a whole, we're all over the place, LA, IE, this kind of crib, that kind of crib, that kind of blood, you know, and we got that, that attitude where nobody could tell us what to do, so we're not really... So you guys aren't unified? We're not at all. It's amazing the the structure that they have. Blacks believe that um, a Spanish like love that world, like the whole prison world, because like, you know, they're just like way more a force in there. The people in our jail come from your community. After racial violence broke out in LA County jails, a group of clergy and community leaders visited the facility in Castaic, north of Los Angeles. Good morning. Good morning. We are back. And I brought some guests, some good friends to see you. Naji Ali, the director of Project Islamic Hope, urged blacks to help each other by uniting. Y'all have to stick together and be united no matter what. Excuse me, brother. Yes, sir. We, we're trying to stay united as well as possible and set a self-discipline for all the brothers that's around here. Yes, sir. But we're always outnumbered. There's right. never even, I know the population of Hispanics are higher. Yes, sir. But, so I mean, come on, man, not five to one. Right. Now, let me I get upset when I hear the media say there's fighting in the county jails. It's not a fight, it's an assault on these inmates. Michael recalls from his time in prison how quickly things can get out of control. I remember this one youngster right before I left, he got into a fight with a Hispanic. Black and Hispanic? Yeah, fight? black dude. Got there trying to impress his big homeboys and um, assaulted a um, Hispanic coming back from child. Now, he just got there. I guess he didn't know, no idea about the number game or whatever. And as soon as he did that, it was a mess because a lot of blacks was in their cells watching the Laker game. And we heard the alarm go out. People go look at the door and see what's up. And all of a sudden, you just see a lot of Hispanics running the building, assaulting like the only few little straggling, like 10 blacks in the building. It's like 40 Hispanics. I'm like 10 on each inmate just assaulting them, you know what I'm saying? But that one person do, do that silliness outside, they be like, oh, I get them. It is my belief that, that maybe as much as 95% of the inmates in this county jail system just want to do their time and go on to wherever they're going, whether that's back sure. to the streets or one of the state prisons. Um, but you have groups or you have people that rise up and become ringleaders, as we call them, shot callers in charge. You have orchestrated uh, and organized gangs uh, within the system who, who become very organized and they devise plans to assault uh, a member of the other race and that's really precisely what happened here. If the offender is a Latino, you're required to back up that Latino if you're a Latino. And until the Latinos decide to stop attacking the blacks, we're almost powerless to stop this from happening. It's, it's really just one side. The blacks really don't want no problem with that stuff. And what about the smallest racial group, whites? Officials say whites tend to ally with Latinos, only because Latino numbers are greater. Add to this explosive mix, prison guards. Michael says although many just do their jobs, there are some correctional officers or COs with biases of their own. Blacks got COs, that's some probably with some for Crips or whatever, the Hispanics and, and the whites, you know, and the whites got some racist ties and be kicking it with like all racist um, inmates. They can create, you know, a lot of chaos too, you know, because yeah. so it's, the COs like play, can play a big part, major part in that, you know. 
Michael managed to survive 12 years behind bars, and it was in his last year in the lockup that his life changed. That's when he met this man, Renford Reese, a professor of political science at Cal Poly Pomona. Reese had written several books, including one about young African-American men. And this book looked at how young black men had uh, embraced one monolithic model of black masculinity, and that's the gangster thug model. What's up, man? What's up, man? How you feeling? Right. Someone gave Michael a copy of one of Renford's books. It made a huge impact on him. I wrote him a letter telling him that I felt where he was coming from, even though I came from a different walk of life, and he grew up with his mother and father and went to all these colleges and well-educated. I didn't have no beef with that. I feel we all in this together for a bigger picture. I was struck, one, by how eloquent the letter was, and two, by how candid he was. So I decided to go visit him. Were you actually in the cell or you were out? When I wrote that, uh -huh. I mean, I wrote some of them pieces at, um, at the, um, when I was a clerk. And he had so much talent and he had so much potential. So I told him when he paroled in March of 2005, I said, I will, I will mentor you, I will guide you, I will make sure you don't go back and get caught up in the system. In fact, one of Michael's letters describing different kinds of prison guards is now part of Renford's latest book. The book is called Prison Race. What are we talking about when we say uh, prison race? You know, young black men are six times more likely to go to, crime, go to prison for, for some uh, crime than someone who is white for the same crime. Renford is not surprised by the racial violence in our prisons. He says the system is bursting at the seams, that politics and special interests like prison guard unions have blocked reforms, and that education and rehabilitation programs have been taken away. And in some cases, you even take away recreational opportunities from inmates. What do they have to embrace? They have nothing to embrace but bravado. And you see the consequences of this, uh, this hypermachismo manifested in the uh, prison rise. So how do we curb racial violence in our prisons and jails? Sheriff Lee Baca says the answer is not more prison guards. The whole dorm on the black side is going to line up behind the black guy, and the entire dorm of Latinos are going to line up on the Latino side. Twice as many deputies are going to stop, stop that fight. But separating the races might. And for the time being, he has put African-American and Latino prisoners in separate areas. But complete segregation isn't practical. You can't run a jail like that. It, it's far too difficult to keep uh, the different races, races segregated because, as you can see, this place is like a big city. There's a lot of movement in here, inmate movement. We transport hundreds of inmates to court every day, back and forth. We, we have a, uh, a clinic where they get medical services. There's a lot. They go to different uh, programs. So You're to saying keep it's a pain them in the separate, neck to keep well, it's not only a, uh, it's not only a pain in the neck. I think ultimately, uh, different races are going to have to learn to coexist. Hey, I need to As for Michael back. Fisher, he's completed his sentence a year ago. He now works for a moving company, talks to students about his experiences, and writes rap music. Because, like I said before, going back to prison just isn't cracking. I'm far from that brother that's lazy and slack and lacking ambition and drive. I see it as an easy mission making this transition from the pen to outside. With Renford's help, Michael hopes never to see the inside of a prison cell again. I've been out a year, been working ever since then. You gotta want to help yourself. Then when that happens, doors open up. As if in this free world, it's just too hard to cope because white folks keep telling me no. True, they ain't the only folks who ain't trying to see me stay afloat. Still, I won't drown. We'll run while I move. This could be you up against rope, so don't clown. I'm going to find my way around these roadblocks that they got to keep an ex con in a tight spot till my heart stop like my boy Pop. And I ain't talking about one of those scandalous plots or schemes or selling dope to fiends or any other felonies.